it is time to upset some people. So I thought this was gonna be a fun idea, I'm gonna give you 10 hot takes on this meta because, well, usually you just point out the obvious things, Max is good, this hero is good, that is bad, but I have some hot takes about the meta, some ideas, and I've played a lot, and I think some things are not what it seems, I think some people are wrong about certain things, so I'm gonna throw them at you. Now, I expect a bunch of comments of people telling me I'm wrong, that's the point of this video, because I've been getting that on my previous videos. That's what sparked this video, uh, when I made my Shadow Walk video, when I made my tier list video, people always say uh, that I'm wrong in everything. Whenever I rate something bad, there's gonna be people pointing out that it's good. Whenever I rate something good, there's people gonna point out it's bad. People always have their own opinions, but it's the internet, so... I'm gonna throw some opinions at you. Now to prove that I'm not just some random, like it says in the title, uh, I just hit top rank EU, like rank 6 yesterday. Previous season I peaked rank 4, before that I was 14.7k the season before, so I'm not just a random, I'm not just making shit up. These are actually backed up, I actually believe these things, and I'm gonna justify them. So let's jump into the video. My first take is that demons are overrated. In my Discord and on Reddit, everywhere I see people say that demons are strong, super good, Good, one of the best tribes. I don't think so. I've played demons a couple times and they're super easy to counter. They're just a pile of stats. When I know my opponent's demons, I play a spore, a single five drop, and it kills their biggest unit because the five drop in demons, the thing that skills the most, is taunted automatically. So their biggest units are guaranteed taunt. So if I just play spores and selfless, like it's so easy to beat. I had a shitty board, but I was in a top two game somehow, and my opponent played, played demons and I just beat him because I found two spores and a selfless. Not just that, demons are only good because of the tree drop the tree job that generates more demons that's good that is broken that thing is going to be nerfed and then demons are going to be bad because demons don't have other tools they have the stuff on tier 5 they have stuff on tier 6 they'll scale up one thing i'm not saying is that demons are bad demons are good they will get top fours they have high win rates they scale a lot i'm just saying they're overrated i think people make them seem a lot more powerful than they actually are at least in higher ranks i see a lot of demons but i see a lot of other comps take first place because demons scale but not as exponential like beasts do they can't scam as well as mechs do they don't scale as much as dragons do with nadina so demons don't have still that many late game tools besides raw stats and it's so awkward dude i played with a five drop i played with a six drop you can't really freeze triples because it's gonna be eaten out of the shop. If you find a triple or a pair, you can't buy it because you will have to sell units and then you might accidentally eat it and you have to roll on your final turn and waste money. Dude, I hate playing demons so much as well. Demons are good. They're just way too overrated, and I think you'll see that after some nerfs and after the meta settles that demons will be played, but a lot less. Or at least if you climb up the ranks, you I think you'll see it way less as well. Second hot take is that beasts are the best tribe. A uh, reason being, Frogger comps are unbeatable. If someone has a good Frogger comp, you can almost literally go infinite, and the stats that you can get is insane. There's not a single comp that can outstat it. Now, beasts do lose to Zap sometimes or to Cleave, like beasts are not invulnerable. But I think they're literally the easiest tribe to go. You have Direction on tier 2 that gets you super strong. You have River Croc on 5, you have Mama Bear on 5, you have Goldrain Soul which works. Like Beasts have so many strong tools now that if I find Beasts I just stick with it and I know I'm gonna get a top 4 and win games. Beasts are so good. You can do whatever comp, a Deathrattle comp, a normal Goldrain comp, a Frogger comp. You can scale infinitely, you can spike, you can slowly grow. Like, it, it's nutty. Beasts also have cleaves with Hydras, like, beasts are, I think, the best tribe. Flurgle and Ysera are good. Now, win rates are gonna, well, tell me that this is wrong, but I think that's because these heroes are not super easy to play. Now, usually heroes that force certain tribes are bad, uh, but unless the tribes are good, right? So dragons is good, I think, with the lady, and I think dragons in general, early mid game, actually got really good. You can win dragon games or get top trees without finding Caligar and Adina. I've done that multiple times by just finding like Terragossas and the Forge Up, which buffs like adjacent dragons. You can also find uh, the Whelp Smuggler and then just any buffs, like even gems buff up your dragons with plus health and, and skill that way. Like Razor Gores, um, you have so many good ways now to grow dragons early mid game. And of course late game still have the Nadina and Kalik, which is just like one of the best scaling in the game, one of the best ways to close it out. And they can either counter the Divine Shields with the new Forge Up that like deals 3 damage first. You can counter pretty much anything in the game. Dragons have it all, so that's why I think Ysera is good. You just gotta know how to play her. I'm not gonna do a full guide on her, obviously. Uh, this is just some, some hot takes. I might do it, but basically uh, you just wanna farm triples and get the good dragons early. I stay on one, I find a triple on the good new one drop. The Chroma 
growing, I think it's called. Then just level up, triple into a four, get some more dragons on tier three, because there is the bronze wardens, there is the twilight emissaries, the buffs, and again the Terragossas, and maybe you find some elves murders. They go to four. You take the game very slow instead of trying to power level and hitting them nuts. Every time I played the Sarah, I got a top three. Same with Flurgle. Flurgle, uh, Murloc shifted from more of a comboish comp with like Lookout Bran into more of like a tempo mid game build, mainly because of Honcho. So what I've been doing with Flurgle, I've played Flurgle three or four times over the last days, and I don't think I got a bottom four once. They're very consistent by doing the same thing over and over, and that is just staying on tier two and just cycling a lot of tokens and just find finding honchos, finding war leaders, so you're really strong, then going to the tree, cycling some buffs and eventually tripling into fives. If you find Bren early, you probably win. It, it, it's really great if you find a Bren of your, your triple with Flurgle, you're almost guaranteed a, a top two because it's that strong. Now if you don't hit Bren, that's fine, I also got top fours without Bren, so if you hit Bren and that instantly went through the game, that means that's kind of a good hero and even if you don't hit the brand of your triples because you're guaranteed triples with this hero power you'll still get pretty strong because you're tier 4 you find lookouts you can triple into the gurgle you could level at some point you have poison i don't know man i've been having good runs with flurgle real quick uh the majority of people again who watch my videos are not subscribed but if you're enjoying the content if you're enjoying some of my meme videos or if you like guides or like videos like these don't forget to subscribe to the channel because i try to post regularly so if you want to keep in the loop of things and get better at the game yeah subscribing helps me out thank you and of course liking the video but let's get back into the content let's move on to the next hot take and that is that you pretty much can't lose mmr with max now i don't actually remember a game where i got bottom four with max i probably had a couple of them but in the grand scheme of things i think it's pretty much impossible to lose mmr with max because even games where i had zero scaling i didn't find grease bot i didn't find any buffs whatsoever just by having like deflector bots and maybe a mackerel and some resets you very often scam top fours like max are in such a broken position right now with all the shields they keep rega regaining all the tools that they have even the mechano tank like the kind of a juggler guy for max or for whatever tribe you play is really strong tempo they have so much stuff tier four so much stuff tier five it's insane uh, max whenever i find nothing i just fall back on it i hard force it and i know i'm fine i'm gonna save a lot of mmr so if you don't know how to play max i would say definitely learn it it's the biggest mmr saver you can know next up is that the damage cap was a bad idea. Damage cap is bad. Uh, now, I'm gonna say conceptually it sounds good because it saves you from like 30 damage high rolls in the mid game, which is the only good thing about it, I think. It does save people from like non games, but actually it doesn't. It, it's like a pseudo, uh, like a band aid on a broken leg, like I said in one of my videos. It's, it's a a pseudo solution because it doesn't actually solve the reason why damage cap was ne necessary in the first place the high rolls which i'm going to talk about in a second but uh yeah there's just so many broken things in the game this doesn't fix the broken things they're still in the game you're just gonna die a couple turns later lobbies are just a little bit longer but the the, the power spike difference is still the same people who power spike will still be have power spiked so many turns from then and uh, damage cap also saves people to do greater stuff so power spikes even increase like if i'm at 16 hp and i'm facing someone strong i know i'm just gonna level and take the l because i'm taking the l anyway i can't die and there's people disconnecting anyway like very often if there's a disconnect or someone dies early damage cap is removed and you'll still take 30 damage on turn six it is pretty damn stupid damage cap didn't really solve much uh it is a cool concept i think it it could have a place in the game but that doesn't solve the issues that were in the game at the first place and actually damage cap might reintroduce pr problems like i explained with the power leveling that they didn't think of like damage cap might bring more problems than solutions actually to the table sixth hot take is to just remove Sherlock, Janus, Hook Tusk, or remove or rework tokens apparently this is a hot take i thought this was like a universal thing that everyone hated those those heroes but it's not when i made those videos or when i talk about this i have so many people tell me oh shadow walk and genes are fun they're balanced i don't see them win much look at the win rates and i don't like all of those arguments uh, have you ever seen top streamers play because uh, whatever streamer you're gonna watch uh, tonight or tomorrow or whenever if they're on top leaderboards if you see shadowbox and genesis in their lobby i'm gonna guarantee you that very often not 100 percent of the time but if they hit tokens they're winning the lobby i played yesterday and i had three lobbies in a row where shadowbox took three six jobs on turn six if a hero is able to consistently just super high roll if they hit a couple tokens early it's not balanced very often uh the argument of well i don't see this in my lobbies and i, I think they're fun to play and they're low win rates the arguments come from people who are 
I would say, not performing on, on leaderboards level, so they don't really see people play them optimally. People like Shadow Walker and Janus are probably fine if you don't know how to abuse tokens, if you don't know the right leveling patterns, strategies, and if you don't Hyrule, then, then they're fun. But sadly, people who have perfected them just turn every lobby in a non-game. There's so many clips of people getting like double amalgam on Eliza, Kala goes on turn 6. Uh, look at my own video, look at so many other games. These heroes are a massive problem, they will remain a problem. And people, I think, just don't see it because they don't get in touch with it. And you might say, well, not my issue, that's the issue of the high ranked players. Yeah, then, well, I hope you never climb to the high ranks because then you're gonna complain as well, just like everyone else, about these things. So I hope, please, that these get reworked and removed. Because even if it's not consistently winning every single lobby and it doesn't happen every single time, a mechanic that turns every lobby in, we're fighting for second place, we just gotta dodge the shadow walk or we're dead, and whoever dodges the shadow walk the longest gets second, otherwise you get eighth place. Like, that's not fun, it takes a lot of fun away, it just removes games that you have no impact, you have like no counter play, then that should not exist. Next hot take is, we got the beta tag removed, but the game is still in beta. I feel like the beta tag, it has been there for so long, we don't know why. And now it's finally removed, but the game feels the same. They did get rid of some visual bugs, but with the latest patch, there have been so many bugs. They've patched a couple times already, like they've done some hotfixes, but they're still there. The display gold bug is also still there, uh, everyone moving to tier 1. I feel like the game isn't less buggy than before, so I don't know what it means the battle tag <laughs> like it got removed now what does that mean the only thing that changed is that it's on the the front page now it's not under the modes tab anymore it's actually just on the main screen so it feels like the battle tag just served that purpose and instead of being a game mode it's on the front screen but then why is arena not in beta because it's a game mode I lots of questions I don't know what it means, Battlegrounds being in beta, not in, in beta, but it feels like it's still in beta. We'll see w what the hell happens next. Then the Panda hero, Nguyen, is broken. I think the hero is insanely strong. If I get him offered, I instant take him no matter what tribes in the lobby. The flexibility is the main key, like getting be every hero power in a game possibly is amazing because I've heard a couple theories why it's because of diminishing returns both are said that that uh, like having your first shield on George is amazing getting your hero power on Reno is great getting like a little bit of everything is amazing because if you like overdo it it gets bad like a George with a full divine shield board loses to a single ghoul but any hero that can get a George hero power for a turn is great because you can divine shield one of your big dudes people are not necessarily gonna play a ghoul then there's so many other examples like uh, if you find Omo sure you get two gold on a leveling turn and then the next turn where you don't need to level you can get a different hero power you don't need to Omu hero power anymore so the fact that it's super flexible that uh, hero powers can work in your favor and that you will always well even if you don't get a hero power for a turn there's so many heroes that don't use their hero powers for multiple turns like omu for example panna is broken even though i know uh, i include this as a hot take because i've seen so many people say no he's not you can just get shit hero powers every single turn and then you have a game without a hero power i've played for days trade, I because I, I grinded all the way up to this rank and I've played Panda every single time. I've not had a single game where I Panda felt bad, where I didn't have a hero power. Every single game felt amazing, so I don't really understand that argument. Next up, I think pirates will be making a big comeback soon. Pirates are kind of shit right now. That's because everything is so overtuned. I assume there's gonna be patches soon and nerfs, and I don't think they're ever gonna nerf pirates. If anything, they'll buff pirates. And I think pirates are like borderline viable. I played patches yesterday, I never found Hogger. In the end I found one Hogger and I played off that one Hogger for so long and I almost got first. I think I kinda got scammed uh, and I got I only took a third place but it was I was really catching up with the Dragon players and the Mech players. With raw stats all I had was a Peggy. Uh, I had like one Gribber that wasn't even golden. I had a bunch of other random golden pirates. I used arms, yeah one Hogger, uh, a golden salty looter. Pirates skill insanely well right now, mainly because of Peggy. I think think Peggy is amazing. Peggy allows you to scale rapidly even with one hogger. And on top of that, Peggy has synergies with like Quillboards. If I triple into a flat tusk and all the gems you generate give you buffs on the board as well, because it's for every card you get in your hand, you buff up your board. I could buy bacons because Sun Bacons gives me plus two plus two gems in the hand. And that also get like gives you two cards, so it buffs your board. Like there's so many cool interactions that have yet to be explored, but pirates just sadly aren't that playable. But I feel it. I feel like soon we'll see a takeover of pirates in the meta. Last but not least, I feel everyone fuming and like raging in their chair for everything that I'm bringing up and, and disagreeing with me, but it's fine. You can disagree with me. 
Last but not least, I think this is the best update we've ever had. I'm gonna call this a hot take because I've seen a lot of people complain about a bunch of broken stuff and things being out of line. But it's been the most fun I've had since the patch. Most of the time when a patch is released, I have fun for a little bit and then things get really boring. I remember when Elementals was released, I was super hyped. And it was kind of a letdown because it was just super broken. Every lobby was elementals. I feel like most lobbies are super diverse. Sometimes it's demons that win, sometimes beasts, max. I've seen everything win pretty much. I've even seen pirates in top trees. I've even seen murlocs, like murlocs can still high roll. Uh, I see a, a variety of heroes. There's still, of course, the broken issues that I talked about. There's things that are overtuned, but that's going to be patched. But I'm having fun. And I think they did a, gr a good job on the redesigning all the tribes. They did a good job on keeping the same theme for every tribe, for reworking the, the boring units into new units. I think overall, it's been a great patch. I'm having fun and I hope I've seen other streamers also have fun. I know things aren't ideal, but they're never going to be ideal. There's always going to be people complaining if, if everything is ideal for one person. It's never going to be ideal for another. You can't please everyone. But hey, this is everything I had to say. Please let me know what you thought down below. Now, remember, you can disagree, but please don't just go in the comments because I've seen so many people go in the comments saying you're just plain wrong. This is a shit take. Dude, what the hell are you saying? These are broken. Like, try to see things from a different perspective. Even though it's the internet, people like to disagree and just go like all out and completely yell at each other. But please understand, we're all just human. Take it easy. Discuss. Don't just be an asshole because it's not because our opinions are different from yours that you're right. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying you're right. Don't think anyone is right. On that note, I'm gonna end it. I hope this, you take away something from this video so that maybe you will rethink some of these things and and uh, learn more about Battlegrounds because I think there's uh, a lot to, to learn from this. Maybe you're gonna start playing Florigal now and see the potential of Mur Murlocs or maybe you're gonna experiment with pirates or force less demons. <laughs> Have a good day and take care.